with somebody else. multitude of sin so I don't know we don't know I love we love Melissa I don't know we don't know I love we love because auntie Michelle let today be the day and I'm declaring it in this house may God be God judge between the leadership of this house and the people of this house. Because Andrew Ruth, we always talk about church hurt. And we don't know said the sheep also has a responsibility to the shepherd. So let me put that out there. Andrew, you remember the last time the spirit rise up? It was in 20, 20, no, 2018, 2017, 2018, somewhere there. And Auntie Ruth and I bore the blunt of it. Pastor bore the blunt of it. And I stayed quiet, Rochelle. Because I didn't want to offend anybody. I still not offend nobody. I offend the spirit we are operating at them life that they give access to. Let it be known today. It's either you stand for Pastor Musaleng. We have no problem, Tommy, to bless people and let them go. I say that without any apology. We now put nobody out of the church. But if you continue to kick against the prick, you're going to take vengeance on yourself. And to root, it's too long and too hard. We have been digging the wells. And somebody come and keep on putting dirt. In it. Well, today I declare in VFC, <coughs> Rio Boath. Rio Boath and Perez. We're going to overflow and we're going to break forth. And let me show you. Too much monster have too many heads. And Tidana, too much monster have too many heads. But today, we revoke every influence. And every monster we are speak division and discord in the house of God. It's a holy harder. It's one that is sanctified unto God. And it is one that is dedicated unto God. And it is going to stay that way. Can somebody bless the name of Jesus? Can somebody bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. If God be God, let me tell you something, man of God, by next year this time, if the Lord tarries, there is going to be a breaking forth in VSC. 
Me now ask, me I tell. And those breaking forth are going to be righteous seed. And to Ruth, just as how David was able to kill Goliath, we are going to raise up children of God, sons of God, Lord God Almighty, gender neutral, that are going to be able to kill Goliath's brother. Lord Jesus, you have to understand. I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to preach. But you have to understand, say, God, I'm going to do a work, and he's already doing a work in VSC. And if we don't align ourselves, we will leave get left behind and nobody now isolate you but the spirit of God is going to isolate you himself I mark my word you're going to feel that isolation whether you sing upon the praise team you play the music you preach the word you teach the word any position If we're not align with self, God is going to bring this grace and isolation. And he's going to do a transfer and a change. So let us have a mind to work. And work in a holy and sanctified way. That God can be pleased. That God can be pleased. That God can be pleased. Can you just find somebody and say, be encouraged? Mm -hmm. No, they, you know, you know, something like, uh, find somebody and say, be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Find somebody else and say, be encouraged. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is Lord of this house. And he is Lord of our situation and he's Lord of our minds. So spirit lead us. Where our flesh can't go. Father. Mm. As I hand over to the moderator. Mm. Kayada daba sura bandiasa. <clears throat> Why? Yeah, man. Whew. If we're not willing to give up ourselves, we're not worthy of Him. If you're not willing to give up of yourself, because hmm. God is going to do the supernatural, you know. That can't be stopped. Because the man of God declare it. But if we experience the supernatural, it's up to us. And I've taken enough time and I'm about to leave. Because I have another preach, I have a preaching engagement. But I want us to understand that God. You have no rivals. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, and yours is the Lord. Yours is the name above all names. You have no rival. You have no equal. Who can stand against him? 
congregation went before even though it was supposed to be at some point after so it <laughs> kind of shift up um so now we're going to have the scripture reading by joshua cecil and Kristen, and this choice of using the youth different age groups it's strategic it's to show how similar to how moses would have groomed joshua so we are showing the the steps we are all called to mentor and groom that those that are younger than us, because we have to bring them up in other faith, right? Um, after that, we will have a quick, quick, quick welcome and announcement by Kari. And then after that, the next person you hear. So, all right, so after the welcome and announcement by Kari, a quick welcome and announcement, we will have a quick greeting by Pastor Fiona Riley so she can greet the congregation. All right, so Joshua Cecil Kristen, you're up. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 14 to 27. I see Cecil, Josh. Oh, so we need, we need somebody then. Come, come guys, come, come. So you guys just redirect a little bit more. Morning everybody, just give me a second please. Good evening. Good morning. The scripture reading will be taken from First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse fourteen to nineteen. 
and it says, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not, uh, not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body, if the whole body were an eye? Where were the hearing, if the whole were hearing? Where were the smelling, but not hath God? Set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath taught please him and if they were all one member were were the body is the word necessary Twenty, but now are twenty, but now are the many members yet but one body, and the eyes cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body seem to be more feeble and necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestowed more abundant honor, and our uncommonly part have more abundant commonness. And here in the word of the Lord, we honor by saying, And I'm going to be reading from verse 24 to 27. For our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. 27 and last. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. This is a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying. Good morning, Victory Family Center. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Victory Family Center, let us please take just a few minutes to honor the spirit of the true and living God that has been residing with us all morning. Um, I am Carrie and I am bringing greetings on behalf of the youth group because this is Youth Sunday, and I hope you have been blessed thus far. Um, special greetings um, and welcome to our senior pastor, Pastor Musalem, in his absence. Warm, gre <laughs> warm greetings to our, <laughs> to our wonderful associate, Pastor Mom to Many, Pastor Shanika Ling. <laughs> Even though she used the road in this morning and confused us, but... <laughs> And special greetings to all of our leaders, Auntie, Auntie Keon, Auntie Senya, Auntie Ruth. Also, the leaders of all the ministries within the house, you know, so our children's group, the leaders of our children's group, um, our worship leaders, also um, um, our Bible study teachers, you know, special honor to you guys. Any first-time visitors this morning, we give you a warm greeting. Are there any? Anybody coming for the first time? Wow, welcome. Warm, warm welcome. I hope you have been blessed. I hope you will continue to be blessed. I hope you will be back. 
It might be in your seat as pastor. I'm not taking greetings. I'm not taking anything for that. That's pastor. <laughs> you might be in your seat. To all of our new members and all of our long time, not old, we're not old, our long time members, to all of our online members as well, we greet you well. Um, flowing right into the announcements. <laughs> no, we had some other special persons that I want <laughs> to welcome as well. Um, so, past Pastor Shantisco, yes. Okay, Debbie Roden, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, Mr. Fagan, Sister Tamika's husband, welcome as well. It's a pleasure to have you, and we hope that you will be back. Right, so announcements. I think we know the announcements. We have a lot of church every day, Zoom meetings. Okay, let's run it. Zoom, Monday, 7 p.m. Well, Okay, so we have 5 a.m. devotion Monday to Friday. So we'll just put that out there via Zoom, right? And, of course, our Zoom meetings for the rest of the week, Monday, 7 p.m., we have prayer meeting, guys. Prayer, 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 come on. Tuesdays, we fast, and that is led by our senior pastor, Pastor Mr. Leng, on YouTube at 11 a.m. And then we meet for Fresh Fire, 7 p.m. on a Tuesday. Wednesdays. We may um, be having, well, we usually have our split meetings, so men's and women's meeting, but that, you know, is not every week, so just stay tuned. Thursdays, we always have our Sunday, well, Thursday Bible school, wonderful team of Bible study teachers, and guys, it's very informative, lots of debates, come on, and let us see if we can finish, John, amen? <laughs> And on Fridays, we have our youth meetings. We have our split meetings. Again, 6.30 p.m. for up to 16 years. And then for the young at heart, you know, not so young, we meet at 7.30 p.m. And big up to our youth leaders who are doing an excellent job. Auntie Sam and Auntie Douglas as well. Saturday, 7.30 a.m., we meet to pray. You wake up, you jump up, and you pray. Guys, prayer is important. And then Sundays, we know at 9 a.m., we are here in the sanctuary, or at one of the sanctuaries. <laughs> we, we are the sanctuary, right? So um, we'll meet for church again on Sunday morning at 9. Um, and I think there's a special announcement for um, Auntie Pauline's mom's funeral. Is it next? Oh, next week, Sunday, April 29th. I had written it down. No, is it 28th? Yeah, it's not next week, Sunday. Okay. All right. Well, let's just tighten that up, and then we'll announce it at a later date. And remember, guys, in gathering, April is almost finished. We need our building. Amen. Be blessed. Okay, so we'll now invite Pastor Fiona Riley to come and bring quick greetings. All right? Make her feel welcome. Somebody bless God in the house. Come on, you can do better than that. Put your hands together. Come on, I'm going to ask you to rise on your feet for a minute. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Musicians, can I get something from you? Just 30 seconds I'm going to take. I won't take long. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Come on. It's not about us, but it is about God. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. I can't feel you. I can't see you. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We honor you in this place. We glorify your name. We salute you in this place. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. If you are walking, talking, breathing, miracles, say something to God. Has he done anything for you? Has he done anything for you? How about that he woke you up this morning? You are clothed in your right mind. That which was meant to destroy you did not destroy you. You're still alive. You still look beautiful. You still look beautiful. You are important to God. Somebody bless God in the house. Ekosa. Manda yarabakosata. I bring you greeting in the name of Jesus. From Toronto, Canada, 
I am honored to be here this morning. I am honored. It is, it is such an awesome privilege to be here. My friend Debbie, she invited me, and there's many churches that we could go. And when she spoke to me last night, I said, going to visit her sister has been long overdue. Because I keep saying that when I come to Jamaica, I must come and see this woman of God. And I've been hearing about her long before I met her. So I said to Minister Debbie, I said, when I go back to Jamaica, I have to meet her. My dad is in the hospital. He's very, very, very sick. I didn't have to be here today. They said to me yesterday, spend as much time as you can with him because there's not much more that we can do. But you know what? My dad is a believer and he's 97 years old. <laughs> Glory be to God. Pastor Lang, I bring you greeting this morning, woman of God. You're an amazing vessel and you are a gift to the body of Christ. The Bible said, no, no man after the flesh, but know them after the spirit. I knew you before I met you. Because I met you in the realms of the spirit. So to God be the glory. If you know her after the flesh, then you are missing out. You need to know her after the spirit. Glory be to God. I give honor to your husband in his absence. We salute that awesome man of God. And the work that he continues to do. I will say this every time. When you see a man or a woman of God stand in this pulpit to lead a body of believers, let me tell you what the responsibility is to intercede for them, to pray for them, to encourage them, to build them up. Let me tell you, it is difficult being in their position. But they have chosen to answer the call and to walk accordingly. So our job is to build them up and encourage them. Glory be to God. The warfare that they fight is already difficult. They don't need people to fight them. Because the warfare out there is great. The warfare out there is great. Let me tell you, I don't care how old you are. You have never seen days like this. You have never seen the world, how corrupt it is. How men want to turn women and women want to turn men. You have never seen days like this. But woman of God, I want to encourage you this morning. As I walk up here, God gave me Numbers 22. I'm going to say to you, Balak sent a word through Balaam. He said to curse these people because they are spreading out. They are becoming too much. Curse these people. I want you to put a curse on them. Balaam, because whatever you curse is curse. And whomever you bless is blessed. So put a curse. You know what Balaam told Balak? He said, I cannot curse these people. Because the shout of the king is among them. Let me tell you, woman of God. God is your real God. God is your backative. God said to tell you he has you. God said he surrounds you. Echo Sata. When I walk up and God gave me that scripture, I said, God, it's the first time I'm coming here. I don't know anything. Why would you give me this scripture? But as I see you labor in the spirit and you war fear, God said to tell you, nobody can curse whom he has blessed. Because shout. He sato. Rabba sata. Reboko sata. Those that are with you are more than those that are against you. And you have to know that you have some snipers in the spirit that is watching over you, woman of God. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Because God got you today. The shout of the king is among you. The shout of the king is among you. And God will do what only he can do. Be encouraged. Be blessed. I'm here to be Phil. God bless you richly. You may be seated in the house of God. Can we just put our hands together for Pastor Riley? I, I find this an absolute privilege, and, and I'm really humbled to introduce someone that is dear to me and dear to us 
one who prays and labors and fight everybody battle and one who stay consistent in teaching and plowing and one who will fight for your pastor too <laughs> you want to take off our heels and fight i'll fling the, the heels too and I can tell you, Andrew, we honor you today. Can you just put your hands together for Andrew Wood as she come? Can we get some more volume on the mic that she doesn't have to? Rallo, can we get some more volume on the mic so that she doesn't have to strain? Please. Hallelujah. Yes, that's it. Thank you. All right, come on, put your hands together and welcome Auntie Ruth. So, Father, we just honor the fact that you are God. Only you could love us. Because there are so many days when we are unlovable. We have disappointed you so many times in so many ways. But as you keep challenging us to become all that you have created us to be, I pray that your word will minister to the hearts of your people. Let your will and only your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to acknowledge our pastor, Pastor Musa Lane, Pastor Shanika Lane, who is here. I want to acknowledge our visiting pastor, the other leaders, members of the body of Christ. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I want to greet me, no man. I know a long time, I don't but I don't turn back in, I just that country. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but uh, at this point in my life, I'm just, I'm just trying my best to manage my responsibilities as best as I can. So I've not been, me not turn back, you know, no, 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 me not turn back. No, I go away. You ca can you imagine me in a short, short reach up here? So <laughs> All right, so I've not been here for two weeks, but you know, I have responsibilities elsewhere. My pleasure to be here today. And I want to say I love this church. When Miss Sammy loved that church, I yeah, mean, me seriously love this church. I love the people that God has called me to labor with and labor for. Yes, even though I may not hurt me sometime. We have a contract that says we have to be out here by 12. And so as a church, we have to honor that. Yeah, ch you know, churches must not be out of order. So we have to honor our contract to be out of here by 12. Today, I just want to continue what I've been teaching, and this is the last. Anybody remembers what I've been teaching on? Ah, and interestingly, today I'm going to teach on restoration. Yeah, I did reconciliation the last time. So I did forgiveness, reconciliation, and today... I am going to be doing restoration. And what a day to be talking about restoration when the spirit of rebuke left, right, and center. All right? Now I don't have my regular, so I'm going to be working from my paper in my hand. We may do it whatever it is. All right. So, um, this is a kingdom community. The theme of our church, reflecting the heart of God. No, we don't always get it right, right, Auntie Shadia? But that is what we have been called to do. The mandate of VFC is that we must reflect the heart of God. The mandate of every Christian community is that we must reflect Christ. All right? And so, when I started this teaching, I spoke about the fact that within the community, we have people who have gone through every single kind of hurt. And, and Fresh Fire just exemplify that. We have people who have been raped, physically abused, um, incest. We have everybody has people who have gone through all kind of things. True? And we, I myself, have gone through a lot. It's the human condition. It's not because God don't love us. It's a part of the broken condition of this life. That we go through stuff. All right? And I just want to recap. So what is biblical forgiveness? It's forgiving others. It's letting go of the resentment. It's not wanting them bad things to happen to them so you feel good. 
And when we want bad things to happen to others, it's the flesh attack. It's our hurt speaking. I'm going to say that when we wish bad things to happen to people who have done bad things to us, that's the hurt speaking. That's not forgiveness. When we forgive, we let it go. Now, does that mean that we pretend it never happened? No. I went through all of that. We acknowledge what happened. We fear up to what happened. We don't use what we call no euphemism. Like some people not dead again, you know, they just pass away or they gone home. If it's rape, it's rape. If it's incest, we call it what it is. If it is murder, call it what it is and let it go. Because sometimes in our desire to protect ourselves, we don't come to terms with the hurt we have been through. And so we don't deal with them appropriately. All right? Um, if I still want revenge, I have not forgiven. Yeah? They still want you dropping a fire and burn up. Yeah, yeah. And when we hear bad things happen to them, we clap. Yeah, me know our cars in the domain. No. Right? And, and, and I did make this disclaimer when I did the first lesson. By the way, the fire, the fire and the brimstone is Pastor Ling. I'm, uh, the two Pastor Lings, all right? I am the teacher. And there's another teacher over there. We have a good balance in this house. I did make a disclaimer that some people full of offense. So sometimes nobody no hurt we. So it's not that we need to forgive anybody. We just need to change with attitude. Some people, if birds fly over them house, is them neighbor over them. So they don't need to go forgive no neighbor because no neighbor, neighbor did them anything. So we have those people who, you know, super sensitive and think people are always against them. When we talk about forgiveness, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who have genuinely been hurt by others. All right. Um, forgiveness is necessary when someone has trespassed against us. This means that the person has crossed a boundary without permission. So when you violate somebody sexually, you have crossed a boundary that they did not give you permission for. All right, everybody get that? So everybody has boundaries in your life. All right, your stuff in the fridge is your stuff. There's a boundary. So when your sister and your brother go and take it out without your permission, they have crossed a boundary. Right. So we have all kind of boundaries in life. And people tend to cross those sometimes. We need to forgive. And when I taught this, I use St. Matthew for those who are here for the first time. St. Matthew 18, 21 to 24. The story of the man who owed $4.36 Because we did a calculation in Jamaican dollars. 4.36 billion dollars who did not was not able to pay and so was forgiven but then when the man who owed him five thousand odd dollars he had the man thrown in jail all right five thousand odd dollars you know and he nearly squeezed off the poor man neck and got him thrown in jail and that shows how wicked our hearts are as people how unforgiving we are so forgiveness is the heart of the gospel there is nobody sitting in here this morning who would, not, who, would, who would have been here had not God's forgiveness touched our lives. Amen? I'm forgiven. Anybody else here is forgiven? Uh, in the old church, we have a song that says, My sins were higher than the mountain, and the Lord sanctified me. Can't help but be old church because that's where I'm coming from. Forgiveness is a mandate, not an option. Forgiveness is not something we choose. We forgive others because if we don't, we will not be forgiven. So God never said measure the size of what they did to us and decide whether or not it is big enough or too big for you to forgive. It's a mandate. And Jesus sets the pattern for forgiveness, so it's a pattern that we follow. All right. None of us are righteous. So when we start judge people and stand up and with pedestal to determine that this person should be forgiven, but that person should not be, we are standing in the place of God. Because we have hurt others. We have hurt others. There's nobody in here who can unequivocally say that they have never hurt anybody. We have all hurt others in as much as we have been hurt. So it's, it's reciprocal. 
We hurt people and we got hurt back. Maybe not by the same people. But forgiveness has to flow because we are not that perfect either. We don't forgive because we are loving and forgiving people. We forgive because we have been loved and forgiven. So it's not because of anything good in any of us. I challenge all away. If we ever get out of Christ today, some of us nice church people in here do some things nobody wouldn't believe. Huh? And I'm telling you, some of us don't look like the things we have done when we were in the world. Because some of we did go on really good. Mm -hmm. Last month, I looked at reconciliation. Because sometimes we pack forgiveness with reconciliation. I want to say that forgiveness is unilateral. Just reminding us that whether or not the person acknowledge that they have done us wrong, we still need to forgive them. Whether or not they say, I am sorry, we still need to forgive them. Forgiveness is unilateral. It flows in one direction. It's me releasing myself from being a captive to what you did to me. I'm going to say it again. When I forgive you, I release myself from what you have done to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not want to live in a prison again. May I, let, may I let you go? All right? And... When we don't forgive people, if we have 20 people we have not forgiven, we go to bed with 20 people every night and wake up with 20 people every morning. Yeah, man, it depends on you. We don't mind it take you two or three hours to fall asleep because we go to bed with them. We wake up with them. They become the baggage that we carry around every A serious baggage them there, you know? Yeah. We all are dreams to so them are doing bad things or we heart upon them. All right. Now, there's one critical thing we need to understand. When we don't forgive people, we bring our past into the present and compromise the future. I'm going to say that again. When we don't let people go, our past, uh, uh, 10 years ago, they're doing bad things comes into our present and cripples us so that we can't go into the future. If we do go into the future, we go with so much baggage that we are not able to operate well. So all of that baggage weighs us down and compromises our future. So it is in our best interest to let people go. Everybody got that? All right, on the talk with me now, man, we are working together, you know. All right, then we go to reconciliation. So reconciliation is different from... Reconciliation is when you, we come together, and I have to admit that, Auntie Carrie, you hurt me. And Auntie Carrie might say, no, you know, me never intend to hurt you. I must say yes, and we, we have a discussion over it. And we lay the groundwork for further discussion. That is bilateral. It flows in two ways. So for some of us, it might stop at forgiveness and never go one foot further. Because it's not everybody we can reconcile with. Everybody got that? So, all right, we have this spate of men killing women in Jamaica right now. You see, if him plan to kill you, no stay around for reconciliation. Find a place in Africa and go, they go live and don't come back. Everybody got that? Not all situations can be reconciled. So whereas forgiveness is a mandate, Re reconciliation depends on the situation and the circumstances. Everybody there with me? Yes, and we saw Joseph and his brother because that's where I taught that text from, from um, Genesis 45, where Joseph's brother came down to Egypt and they were able to begin the dialogue. Okay? So if reconciliation can happen, the ch as the church, because we don't talk about the people outside now, we work on that reconciliation. If we find that we are not able to work with somebody who desires reconciliation, it means we don't forgive. Got that, everybody? If reconciliation is impossible, even though the other party wants reconciliation, and we don't want it, it means we, not, we never forgive, we never let it go. Eh? No, we are can't help till we can't serve God, you know. 
Yeah, we, yeah, man, yeah, man. The, 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 the art, deceptive. The art we make, we feel, say, we forgive, and we never let it go. And so we have to be careful about the posture of our heart. Yes, I mean, we spoke about that at Lent in Sunday school, in sorry, in Bible study Thursday night, where we spent two hours on John 15, 16. Two full hours, and we're not done the one verse yet. Where God said, it is not because you have chosen me, but I have chosen you. So we are chosen by God, and we must be careful that our hearts really and truly belong to God. That's reconciliation. All right? So, you know, in a war again with your neighbor. You and she might, you might, you might not want no more sugar for her again. You understand what I say? Because, but you're not in a, but you know, you know, in a war. You, you can't say morning to your neighbor. Everybody get that? Uh -huh. So, so you, you're still at two of the line when you reconcile her because when, when the last time she gave you sugar, she tell everybody, so she'd give you two pounds of sugar. So you reconcile with her, you know, you no more war, but you know want no more sugar. <laughs> Let's be real. Yes. Because you know why everybody knows when you don't have sugar. So you have all your vibes uh, 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 and drink your hot water until God bring a change. We have to be real, you know. All right. So some people will stop a reconciliation with. You understand, Auntie Karen? We can't pass this because they're not ready to go this yet. All right. So that's reconciliation. And we spoke at length about the fact that the, 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 the saying that we must forgive and forget is not biblical. It's not. Human beings were not, are not wired to forget the issues and the situations that we have been through. We are not wired that way. That is something that God can do because God is God. But God knows why we forget what we go through because kind of we can testify and tell others that I, I went through this. I was raped at five, but God brought me through. And we can tell somebody who has been there and struggling that God will bring us through. And so we spoke about the fact that when Joseph's brother came, Joseph was able to talk about So whatever the relationship was before we pop up, when restoration comes, that relationship goes back to that same condition or it becomes better. Now, remember, you know, may I make a disclaimer? Sister Auntie Rochelle is not everything can restore. I am not saying to this church that you're going to go and restore everything. No, some things cannot be restored. And we have to be sensitive to God. And we have to be people who fast and pray. And if God say restoration, we'll run with restoration. If God say leave it alone, leave it alone. Yes, some cannot, some should not. All right? But, but look here. Again, watch the heart. Because sometimes we call the flesh don't want to do it. We convince ourselves that is God says so. All right. So the greatest example of restoration we have is God reestablishing the relationship between us and him. That relationship was broken because of sin. We were born in sin according to David, shaping iniquity. And so even before we emerged out of our mother's womb, we were sinners and separated from God. So poor little Uncle Zach. 
is a sinner. Him born in sin and shaping iniquity. Eh? Our children are born in sin. Separated from God. But God allows the possibility for restoration. Alright? So, we're going to turn now to Genesis 50. 15 to 21. Yes. Genesis 50, 15 to 21. Joseph again, yes. It says, when Joseph's brother saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you forgive, to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they have committed in treating you so badly. No, please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intend to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. The first thing we want to pull from this text is the fact that although Joseph had forgiven his brothers, they had not forgiven themselves. And I spoke about that when I spoke about forgiveness. A lot of us are struggling in the places we are. Because we have not yet forgiven ourselves for taking up the wrong man. For not being the best of parents. God, let's face it, our children never came with a manual. No? N yeah, it's parenting is, is trusting God and trial and error. Every, everybody here, and, and I don't care if you have 100 children, every time one born is a different trial and error. Right? So forgive yourself for not being the best of mom. You had the best of intentions, but you just did not know. Some of us drop out in school because we were pregnant as teens. Forgive yourself. Move on. Grab the new opportunities that come. There are so many reasons we need to forgive ourselves. Joseph's brothers had done him wrong. They had done him evil. Right? And they knew that they had done him evil. And although Joseph had forgiven them long time ago from verse chapter 45, they had not yet forgiven themselves. So know that Joseph's father is dead, them come and appeal. All right, so this, they could be having problems for several reasons. One, the state of their own heart. Let me tell you something. Joseph had some wicked children. Jacob, sorry, had some wicked children. These boys killed off a whole village. Remember when they got the men to get circumcised and then when they couldn't move, they just kill off all of them. So their heart really wicked. You can't imagine, oh God, you can't imagine all of the women them and the people them were then left without father after they kill off the whole of the man them. What happened to those women and children? Eh? Everybody there with me? So their hearts were wicked. And they knew their hearts were wicked. So they misunderstood the state of Joseph's heart. And Shadia, because them could, them so wicked, them think Joseph wicked like them. But by the time them born, the wickedness is run out, out of Jacob's wife, them me look like. <laughs> eh? The whole of them up there, so get the whole of the wickedness and the, um, the Benjamin and, and Joseph never got any. So they thought that because their hearts were wicked, Joseph's heart was wicked too. And some of the times we judge people, we judge people's hearts based on the condition of our own heart. Anybody in here? Yeah. And some of the time God just shame we because the things we accuse people of in our hearts, we realize that they're not guilty of. Yeah. All right? So they, they were also functioning their own guilt. Then the guilty bad. Imagine all of them sit down there and plot and plan for show Joseph in the hole. Yeah? Yeah. So they were guilty. 
There, there's nothing innocent about what they have done. Them bad, they're wicked. Like me and you. You see, when Mr. Bad and Wicked is only me one in here, Bad and Wicked, all right? <laughs> me just love church people. Them same and sanctified. I never, nobody in here in the spirit I rebuke since bad and except me look like. <laughs> and, and let me tell you something. Repentance is difficult if we can't see the condition of our heart. All right. So, so they sent to Joseph. So they appealing to Joseph, verse 17. Your father left these instructions before he died. I lied to my telling you. Jacob never tell them nothing. Yes, so, so, so they're trying to cover themselves now. They're wondering what's going to happen to them. So let us appeal to our dead father because at least Joseph did, we listen to him. So Joseph, we hear if we say our father. They sent a message instead of going. Yeah? Me now go just in case he got upset right you now. Let me send somebody else, sir. Just in case he upset, we hear the person they come back on to us. Joseph say, wait till me catch you now. I'm going to fix on the business, you see? <laughs> um, Joseph had already forgiven, but now they were seeking his forgiveness. But one good thing is that now they were admitting that they, were, they had done him wrong. This is the first time in the entire book of Genesis that we see Joseph's brothers saying we did wrong. Let me, let me say this to us. You see, when we go, go ask people for forgiveness or when we seek reconciliation, make we talk the things them out and go. If we're wrong, make we say to people, we did wrong. Nothing annoys me, Auntie Kea, like somebody want me to forgive them and I admit that they're wrong. Mark, you know, me done the forgiveness part already because that. But what I'm saying is we make ourselves to be hypocrites when we can't admit that we did something wrong. I, I, I stole your orange, and I was wrong. Yeah. Everybody get me? You know we need to call out our behavior? We need to, as Christians, we need to be fully into what it is that we have done wrong and call it up. Some of we all go before God, and we know, so we thief six orange, tell ten lie, keep smiling man, and we say, Lord, forgive me for all the sins I've committed. I got him here, you know? Tell him what we do. Yes. And, and one of the things about sin, when we fail to call out sin, we fail to deal with it. Everybody get me? So, I don't love me, love the girls. God, you see, I love her, you know? A fornication. I know God, you see how the woman husband look good. A adultery. And lust. Everybody hearing me? Because you see, let me tell you something. You see, when our ears begin to hear the word in the same way God thinks of it, it makes us ashamed and more desirous to repent. Everybody get me? No, no, I know everybody get me. Everybody get me? Yeah. yeah. I never borrow your borrow me ten thousand dollar coming in and lend it to you and they ask me. I teeth your teeth. Eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I'm saying is that we hold ourselves accountable when we face up to what we have done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody? Mm -hmm. So call the spear the spear and stop at the spear that phone. All right. And I want to say this. Imagine the torment that these young men had been going through. They're not young again, you know. More than 50 years ago, they sold Joseph. And for all of that time, they live with the guilt. Imagine. Imagine how many nights they laid in their beds wondering where Joseph, Joseph was. They all a dream about Joseph, eh? Hey? Everybody, imagine Auntie Kean, they sat there and watched Jacob dying of pain. And they knew that it's them did sell Joseph and Joseph never did at that point. And they watched their father mourn for Joseph for how long? 
They're really wicked. Yes. Sin multiplies. I, I want us all to hear this that I'm going to say. Sin costs us more than we are willing to pay. And takes us further than we intended to go. I'm going to say that again. Sin costs us more than we are willing to pay. And takes us further than we intended to go. And every sin we go and pay account for. I'm sure that by maybe by in our first year, them conscience bother them. But by year two and them not hear nothing about Joseph. I suppose by year ten, they all probably forget Joseph and gonna have for them own children. But sin, our sin has a way of popping up. Yeah, sin have a way of finding us back. Everybody got that? The Bible says that if we do it in secret, it's gonna come to light. And so it is in our best interest. To give up sin. Can I say to the church. As the Holy Spirit warns us. The Bible say. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. All of us have our own struggles. Don't allow that struggles. To define. Those struggles sorry. To define you. Um, I, I'm going to use Auntie Mel. Auntie Mel. You see if you're, you're struggling with something. Come come sit down with one of the leaders. And have a discussion. Because once you begin to unmask what you're going through, change becomes easier. Now you have gotten somebody in your corner who is able to watch over you, hold you accountable, pray for you. So when me call you on Thursday, man, I say, Mel, you know, may I check up on you? Why go on? Th that holds you accountable. Everybody get me? You're in your corner with the sin hanging around your neck and see it under there, tighten the noose. Yeah, because let me tell you, his intentions have never changed. Kill, steal, and destroy. That mandate is set in and change it. And, and so what I'm saying is, I can't make Mel no sin, but what I'm saying is that when you up the level of accountability, it makes you less likely to want to engage in sin. Because now you know, say, boy, I never feel bad when me have to tell Auntie Ruth, say, me do this, you know. And, 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 and you have somebody who prays with you, and that is important. People praying with you, people sharing the word with you, that is so important. And look here, nobody in a church can tell me nothing to shock me. Maybe you can not shock Auntie Kayan. Nobody in church can tell me anything. To shock me. I've worked in the school system for 20 odd years. And let me tell you something. If you think church has stories. You need to go to school. And so we are not calling out anybody to embarrass anybody. What I'm saying is that we are here to offer support. And let me tell you something about VFC. You don't only have leaders who can support you in this church. They are mature members. Apart from the leaders, who you can go to and hold a discussion with. We're not shame nobody. That the kingdom is not about shame. The kingdom is about holding people and helping all of us to go together. I have where I go. And let me tell you something. You see, if you're coming from places where when you tell people things, then go tell everybody else. You will not find that among the, the mature members of this church. You will not find that among the leaders of this church. Anything you say, or you did come tell me, it did right there, sir. And, uh, yes, Auntie Raquel, because look here. Look here. You see, me have enough sin already. Me not call no more. I don't want to get no, no more problem with God. We got talk people. Look here, we have to be real. Yes, as leaders, we have to be confidential. We don't want to destroy people in our church. And too many people are coming from a place of hurt because they said some things to some people in confidence. And too many times the thing reach a road. I don't want that on my shoulder. Auntie Ken, you can't carry that? Where's Auntie Senia? Auntie Senia will cry, you know. So. <laughs> That's a heavy load. When, when, when I'm Consuela, you're going to have to tell somebody new who come into the church, careful of Auntie Ruth, you know. Because 
No, I don't want that. No, I can't deal with that. All right, so Genesis, um, so if verse 18, his brothers then came and threw themselves down before him and said, we are your slaves. Let's turn to Genesis 37, 5. And it says, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheep rose up and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. We are talking today about restoration of relationship. We're walking ourselves through the story of Joseph. What in the world can stop the prophetic from manifesting? No pit. Come on, people, come on. No pit. No prison. No bad mind, brother. No Potiphar's wife. Come on, church. Nothing can stop the prophetic from manifesting if we stand where God has positioned us to stand. You see, people get excited and talk about this person I fight against me and that person I fight against me. No bother with that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Because you see, some of the times we're so concerned with all the opposition, we allow our hearts to get corrupt. Our focus is wrong. Antike and they couldn't stop the prophecy from coming to pass. They did all that they could do. Let me tell you something. If you're in a workplace and promotion pass you, hang on. It wasn't yours. It was not yours. Talk truth. M -m -m make sense? Who can stop what God said? Nobody. No, no, you or except you, except you out of place with God. You know, when I was in, when Ivan blew, I was in the Cayman Islands. Oh, no, 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 say God bad. And when me see the sea lift up and run over a hole, I came and me say, really and truly, God bad for true. Me mean the Caribbean Sea get up and run over. And I am, when me say run over, you, you guys know Cayman, the Cayman Islands is pretty small. And pretty flat. And I mean the sea get up and run straight over came and I run on the other side and gone about in business. Then who could have stopped that like God? When I went to Georgetown the day after, if you see the size stone them where God take out of the sea and throw up on the road at Georgetown, at a, a vehicle, the, 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 um, what they call them, I don't even know what, they had to use to push them off the road. Baku and bulldozer, yes. What I am saying is, we get very frustrated with people when our understanding is skewed. All we have to do is remain in relationship with God. And whatsoever he has decreed for us must come to pass. Problem is that some of the times we want what God has not decreed. And so we end up fighting people over what God never said belonged to it. And when we get it, we don't know what to do with it. And we embarrass ourselves. And so many times in fighting for what was not ours, we get out of place and miss what God had for us. Alright? So, we have to be patient. Joseph had to wait a long time. The wait was there, but he saw it come to pass. So my wee pastor prophesied today, and we go on the yard and expect if so we all get house, we start pack up same time. You know? I mean, I say, you know, if we pack up, but sometimes you have to unpack. Yeah, because we pack too quick. Because some of the times, the things that God wants for us, we have to be processed to receive them. If God promotes some of us too quick, we're going to embarrass God in other places where we're put away. Patience, patience. We also should not try to force God's hand. So, like, God said, I'll get married. And you've gone out of the road, and the first single guy you see, I, I must him. You know, save yet, you know. Me, I can't go to church, God, God, I go save him, call him. 
Yeah, man. So we turn evangelist now. We are trying to save him so we can marry to him. Yes. What I'm saying is that we must be cognizant of the fact that God's timing is not necessarily our timing. But if God decrees, it must come to pass. Amen? Amen? No, none of us not like we to include in myself. But if we force the hand of God, we are going to miss out on what God wants. So we must have the right perspective. Joseph said to them, verse 19, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? And I'm going to stay there for a little while. Am I in the place of God? When we deliberately withhold forgiveness, we are acting as God. We are judging people. You, you should have know better. You should treat me better. Me wouldn't do that. Because technically, you know, when I refuse to forgive Tamika, I am saying that what Tamika has done to me is so bad, I would never do that. Yeah, and I might have done worse than what Tamika did to me to so somebody else. We place ourselves in the position of God, give ourselves the right to judge people and pronounce judgment upon them. So Joseph asked, am I in the place of God? God is the only righteous judge. When we judge, we judge from a place of corruption and wickedness. Eh? All right? So vengeance belongs to God. Him will repeat. A God in him. Our desire for revenge speaks to the condition of our heart. The fact that we want revenge so bad means to say we are not right. Yeah? Me can't wait for God to fix this for me, yeah, man. Me fix him to myself. Eh? Yeah, man. So Joseph understands some principles that we need to get. Joseph understands that there's a place for God and a place for Joseph. I'm going to say that again. He says, am I in the place of God? So there's a place for God and a place for Joseph. There's a place for God to work in our lives and there's a place for me. When we confuse those two, we're going to have problems. So we therefore forgive others. Leave the penalties with God, who is a God of justice. Everybody? Everybody? Mm -hmm. And Joseph said in verse 20, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. The intention of our enemies work out the will and purpose of God for our lives. I'm going to say that again. The intention of our enemies are already a part of God's plan. Remember, say, God, no, wait till we burn, and then every day I try to figure out what happened to you, you know. God exists out of, outside of the days, the minutes, the months, the years. So every intention and action of our enemy will serve to make the will of God come to pass in our lives. So them that are things they are bad things, them are the one them are shoot arrow after we. And what they don't know is that they are propelling us in the plan that God has for us. Everybody, everybody. So among these 11 brothers, was one called Judah, from whom the tribe of Judah descended. Both King David and Jesus are from the tribe of Judah. It was Judah's suggestion to sell Joseph. Dark truth. Him swear blind, him do bad things to Joseph, you know. So Judah has sell Joseph and he had, had him fix all the price. Was his suggestion. Joseph came to Egypt to protect Judah. I mean, not how much people get that. So what Judah was doing was sending Joseph to Egypt so that he, Judah, could be protected so King David could come, so Jesus could come. Hello? Talk about the fact that the enemy think him are you evil. 
And all the enemy is doing is pushing us into the purpose of God. Look here, you feel love your enemy and pray for them, you know, man. Because good things are going to work out for you, you know. Yes, and we don't see that sometimes. Them can't go beyond what God has allowed them. Hello? Them can't go. You, you get it? It's serious, not true. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what happened? When the 70 members of Jacob's family came down to Egypt, they were herdsmen, so they were placed in a place called Goshen to live. Goshen was very fertile land. Be sure you all got strategic. You know, when you start looking at our relationship with God, that's a different kind of way. We act all the way like we are victims, like we don't understand, say, so God, I fight for it. What happened is that the Israelites never, the, the Egyptians never wanted anything to do with the Israelites. So them send them way over Goshen to go stay by themselves. Interestingly, where Goshen is located, it was protected from Egypt's enemies. So when the enemies came to attack Egypt, Goshen was protected. Anybody get that? So in Goshen, the children of Israel stayed there until the 70 people became 2.8 million. Now watch this. If Joseph did not come down to Egypt, Judah would have died. So the line that Jesus came through would have died out. Right. If Joseph did just send the food up a Canaan, go give them, what would happen is that the small family of 70 would have become integrated with the Canaanite tribes and would have died out. Everybody, everybody, let me get the fields. The half of the room now, they know where we're there. All right. So, Goshen became that place of protection. God, God, God just had God in him, man. Eh? And so, our view of what happened to us need to change. Every day we are run for Satan. And, and we get so flustered by what the enemy is doing, forgetting that one of the enemy's purpose, one of Satan's purpose, have to push me in a purpose. That not sound good? One of Satan's <laughs> one of Satan's purpose is to make sure you and I go in the purpose of God. Because it's so hard after we skin, we have to run after God. Yeah, man. Unemployed work of a real. I work for me and you. And so I'm saying to us that our view of our lives sometimes put us in problem. Our lives are in the hand of God. Everybody say for me, my life is in the hand of God. Say it again, it no matter what happened. Yes, it's not in a nobody else's hand. Once we give up our life to God, God is good enough to take control of anything where we get to him. Genesis 45, I want to go to verse 8. So this is Joseph's perspective of what happened. And so Joseph says, so then... It was not you who sent me here. Joseph never said, it was not you who sell me into slavery. Joseph's view of it was different. So somebody was sending him somewhere. So, so yes, so some of the time the word that we use to describe the situation, wrong, you know? So I know he never goes no slavery. He was sent to Egypt. He was on a mission. When you send out people, you expect them to come for and shop with where you send them for. God literally sent him down to Egypt. It was nobody selling him in no slavery. Because let me tell you something. Slavery is a physical, not a mental condition. Nobody can put a Christian in slavery. And if they tie up your two hands and your two foot, they can tie your mind. And so... Joseph's language said he understood what God was doing. You did not send me there. 
Look here. Nothing happens to the believer by chance. I'm going to say that again. Nothing happens to the believer by chance. That's why I live by Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, said God. Amen. It's a plan. So you sent me. You did not send me. I sent them, sent me out. Huh? You know how much time somehow we go at work and we in our office are shabba, shabba, shabba and not doing the boss work? Fighting battles that have already been won? Yes. This Auntie Shadi, I show me a talk, you know? Because sometimes we take our eyes off God who have already won the battle for us. And we are so focused on the people around us that we spend our time, we waste our time, waste our time. We well, could have worked with a lot of people promotion where God promised we. Promotion over the head of the wicked them. Yes. I rebuke some of the time when that even exists. You know, some of the times we pretend as if we are fighting our own battles. Yeah. Hey, Auntie, let me tell you something. If you go to some workplaces and ask, they'll tell you that the worst workers they have are the Christians. And that is unfortunate. So, so as far as me concerned, you know, if you have people at work where I fight you, fight them for your reach at work, no? Right. But I take the boss time fight them. <laughs> May make sense? Come yeah. on, get up in the morning and do your work. Yeah. Don't them in the morning by your time. Before we go there and waste the time, the church needs wisdom. Yeah. We need principle. We are very. Very out of order. Church people out of order. All right. And so I'm closing. Verse 21. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured and spoke kindly to them. We're talking about restoration. Whereas forgiveness is not optional in the plan of God reconciliation and restoration are. Here Joseph's relationship with his brothers was being restored. He's saying alright, forget all of that. Me, me gone over that. Me see over that. Me see past that already. You know, I am going to take care of you. Let's build back the relationship we should have had as brothers. I mean, you do me bad things. All I know say it bad. We're moving right along. Not all relationships can be restored. And re restoration depends on the willingness of both parties. I looked at the statistics this morning. First marriages have a 50% chance of failure. Based on the current statistics. Second marriage is 67%. First, 50%. Second, 67%. Third, 73%. You're rough, not true. Then statistics are bad. So let me ask you one question. Why are we going to leave Sally go look for Sue if the possibility of that marriage breaking down is higher? Don't you just sound better for stay with Sally and work it out before you go engage 67%? You, you see, it's how the enemy fools us. So, so, so the enemy show we all a Sally fault. And then we leave with the baggage. And the unforgiveness. So not all marriages can be restored. Not all relationships can be restored. But guess what? Those that can be, we should seek for restoration. Everybody get me? Those relationships that we can rest, um, restore, go hard after it. 
Because there's no guarantee that so when you left that the friendship, the person who you got to take up to be your friend are going to be a better person. Restoration depends on the circumstances around the case. What happened? How was it dealt with? Where are the persons now? And where is not just a physical location? Where are we spiritually, emotionally, physically? Not everything can be restored. We need God's wisdom. We need, so if a man married again, you can't go married to him, he married again. And you have three little pretty pitney. We have to be real. But I want to share one relationship that can be restored today. If you are in the house and you are not saved, God wants to restore the relationship between you and him. Every human being that's lost can be found by Jesus today. He wants to restore the relationship that was broken because of Adam's sin. Amen? So if you're here today and you're not saved, restoration is at the foot of the cross. The scripture says that currently out of Christ we are his enemies. But today he's saying I am willing to get into a relationship with my enemy. To call you my son and my daughter. What a restoration. If you're a backslider, you knew Christ. You walk with him, you talk to him. You and him have sweet communion, holy padia. But because you fell in love with the world, make we call it thing where you go, you left Christ. You have not been happy. Nobody can taste of Christ and leave God and be happy. Me no matter what you put on, me no matter how much smile you smile, there is a, a, a space in our life, a, 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 a void that only God can fill. And so I'm saying to you, if you leave Jesus, Come today. I make we pray with you because he wants to restore that broken relationship. And if you're in the church and playing games, room for rent apply within. Friday for me and Sunday for him. Eh? Room for rent apply with him. Friday for me and Sunday for him. He wants to. Put you right. So you belong 100% to him. So you don't have to wonder what happened on Friday. Because Friday at Jesus, see him here. And so restoration is here for the church. Restoration is here for every backslider in this room. And restoration is here for every sinner. Don't think this morning that you just got up and feel like coming to church. That is the Holy Spirit. Nobody in their natural self ever feel like coming in the presence of God. We don't have that kind of sense. Anytime we come to the church, to the house of God, it's because the Spirit of God prompts us and say you need to be in the presence of God. And so if that is you for today, salvation is at the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. Hallelujah. Anybody want to lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Say it again. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, mighty God. So the scripture says, when we were his enemies, he died for us. Who dies for their enemy except Jesus? So there's restoration at the foot of cross for every member of the body who sits here. Whether you're in now or out, God can restore. If you're here and you're not saved, or just get ready. If you're here and you're not saved. And today is the day that God sends you to the house to give your heart to him. Just stand up and we'll pray for you. If you're a backslider and today is the day you want to come back home. Just stand and we'll pray. Uh, ushers, ushers get ready. So there's nobody here today. And if you're not so sure but you think you want to come, talk to us and we'll, you know, Auntie Kian is there. I am here. I don't see Auntie Senya. She's there somewhere here. As leaders, 
We are here to direct you to the path of righteousness. God bless you in Jesus' name. All right. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's thank God for the word. These are, that is your call, solid food, right? Um, we, and we've been doing a series. We spoke about, what was it? Rec what, what? Forgiveness, Forgiveness reconciliation. reconciliation, and today we're doing restoration. So I hope you have been learning and not just taking the word, but then I get, I get fat with it and I apply it. You have to apply it to your life. All right. Um, just before the usher comes, I'm going to ask Sashai, okay, to come and pray for the speaker that we had this morning, pastor as well as the youth, all right? And even as Sashai prays, we can't leave prayer on one person. Prayer can't heavy here, so you need to be praying as well, all right? Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. We want to thank you for your word, Lord God Almighty. Father, this morning you are saying to us that you want to reconcile us unto yourself. Lord God Almighty, you would have spoken to us about forgiveness. And Father, I pray God Almighty that everyone in this room who would have heard your word, O oh God, mighty God, that your word, O oh God Almighty, that is sharp, that is like a two-edged sword, mighty God, will pierce, mighty God, that it will cut, Lord God Almighty, that it will do, O oh God Almighty, that which you want it to do. Father, I pray, God, that each and every heart, Lord God Almighty, will, O oh God Almighty, be not be hardened, Lord God Almighty, but will be receptive, O oh God, as you work on us, Lord God Almighty. Father, as you work on us, Lord God Almighty, may we forgive others this morning. May we forgive ourselves this morning, Lord God Almighty, and allow you to do your work, Lord, so that your kingdom will be established in and through us. This morning, Father, I put the speaker unto Ruth before you, Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for her. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that she would have been obedient to you, Lord God Almighty. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. We thank you for her, Lord. We thank you for her, Lord God Almighty. This morning, God, I pray, God, that even as she has poured out, Lord, you will pour into her, Lord God Almighty. Father, I pray this morning that you will fill her up this morning, God Almighty. Father Jesus, I pray, God, that you will continue to fight her battles, Lord God Almighty, because your words say that the battle is yours. So as she continue, oh God Almighty, to work in your kingdom, Lord God Almighty, there is no doubt, Lord, that you will continue to protect her. You will continue to watch over her, and we leave her in your hands, Lord God Almighty. This morning, God, I pray, oh God, for the entire leadership, our senior pastor, Pastor Shanika Leng, Lord God Almighty, I put them before you this morning, God. Father God, everyone, every member of the leadership body, oh God, who supports the ministry, the vision, mighty God, that you have for this church, I put them before you, God, and I pray, God, that you, oh God, will continue to lead them. I pray, God, that as they continue to seek you, oh God, you will continue to order their steps. You will continue to direct their path. And Father God, I pray today, God, that as members of this ministry, Lord God Almighty, we will follow the leadership as they follow you. We will follow the leadership as they follow follow you. Ah, God Almighty, this morning, God, as you would have spoken to us, Lord God Almighty, may we repent this morning, God. May we not be vessels, oh God Almighty, for the enemy, Lord God Almighty, but may we repent before you, Lord. May we be vessels of honor for you, Lord God Almighty. May we be vessels of 
honor for you, Lord God Almighty. May we be available to you, O oh God, O oh God, so you can use us for your kingdom. Father, I pray for each and every youth this morning. I pray for each and every youth this morning, every young man, every young child, Lord God Almighty, every young woman this day, God Almighty. Father, I pray, God, that we will stand. Oh, God Almighty, I pray that we will stand, Lord God Almighty, knowing, God Almighty, that if we put our trust in you, oh God, you will lead us, you will guide us, knowing, God Almighty, that the plans that you have for us is for us to prosper. Mighty God, to give us hope, Lord God Almighty. Father, this morning, we thank you for that hope, Lord God Almighty. And Father, I pray, O oh God, that the young men and women, the young people in this ministry, O oh God. Hello, Victory Family Center Kingston. Welcome to VFC Newsroom. I am Ashin Jarrett. We want to wish those who are celebrating a birthday this week a happy, happy birthday. For those celebrating anniversaries, happy anniversary to you too. Here are your notices. Please remember, every first Sunday is Pastor Sunday. This is where we decide as a church to bless our leader. Join us every Monday night at 7 p.m. for Zoom prior meeting. On Tuesdays at 11 a.m., we have our fasting service online. You can catch us on our live stream at YouTube at Victory Family Center Kingston or at Musa Lang. Join us back in the evening at 7 p.m for fellowship meeting with Minister Shanika Lang. On Wednesdays, we have Virtuous Kingdom Women for the Ladies with Minister Lang and Men's Meeting for Our Brothers with Pastor Lang at 7 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. return onwards, joining us at 7.30 p.m. on our Zoom platform. Guess what? We rise again at 7.30 a.m. on Saturdays for morning prayer on our Zoom platform as well. And there you have it. My name is Oshin Jarrett, and these are your notices. Heaven richly bless you.